This is it, the beginning of the end of the impeachment process. And as House Democrats prepare to charge Donald Trump with high crimes and misdemeanors, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle made their case. I want to be absolutely clear. The integrity of our next election is at stake. Nothing could be more urgent. The president welcomed inter foreign interference in our elections in 2016. He demanded it for 2020. Then he got caught. Chairman laid out some amazing claims, none of which I think after this hearing today, the American people can honestly look at and see that there was overwhelming evidence. Today's hearing felt a little bit more like a trial as counsel for both parties laid out their arguments, picking apart the other side's narrative point by point. Witnesses testified that President Trump has a deeply rooted, genuine and reasonable skepticism of Ukraine stemming from its history of corruption. On his call with President Zelensky on July 25th, President Trump ignored the talking points that were prepared to talk about corruption. He only wanted to talk about two things, the two investigations that helped him politically. The artificial and arbitrary political deadline by which Democrats are determined to finish impeachment by Christmas leads to a rush process and missed opportunities to obtain relevant information. Some have suggested that we should wait to proceed with these impeachment proceedings because we've not heard from all of the witnesses or obtained all the documents. But the reason we have not heard from all the witnesses or documents is because President Trump himself has obstructed the investigation. The Democrats impeachment narrative ignores public statements from senior Ukrainian officials that contradict the narrative. President Zelensky has said publicly and repeatedly that he felt no pressure. Ukraine was pressured then and still is pressured. They are desperately in need of the, of the United States support as they battle uh, the threat of Russia. So, of course, they have to be careful what they said. And as for Trump himself, the White House declined to send anyone on his behalf, letting his tweets speak for themselves, saying witch hunt and read the transcripts. Joining me are Nancy Gertner, retired federal judge, senior lecturer at Harvard Law. Good to see you, Judge. You. Former state treasurer, Republican turned independent, and Trump supporter Joe Malone. Joe, it's good to see you good as you, well. This is sort of like a Cliff Notes, I think, today version. Did anybody who watched today, and I would bet very few people did, did anybody move their position or have their mind cracked from open? From just today? From today. Nah. Do you think so? Not from today. No. Okay, so let's go to the big picture. You wrote a piece in the Globe the other day, the title of which was, This Isn't a Partisan Hit Job. Trump Deserves to be Impeached. Make a case. I went through all the evidence in the case. I went through the evidence as if this were a trial, because one of the narratives that keeps on being repeated is that there's no direct evidence. And I was saying in the piece that if drug dealers... Uh, require direct evidence in the way the Republicans are talking about. The only people to be convicted are the people who st st stand up in the middle of Boston Common saying, I can't stand it anymore, I did it. Um, there is plenty, there's evidence from the president's mouth, overheard conversations, the transcript. There's testimony from his agent. People keep on forgetting Giuliani had, was authorized by the president to speak on his behalf. So what Giuliani has said about what he was doing, which is well nigh incoherent, is itself attributable to Trump. And then whereas in the Mueller investigation, there was no evidence of, the, the, of a conspiracy in advance of Russian meddling, the co-conspirators here are arguably the three amigos, Pompeo, Sondland, et cetera, who clearly were in this together, as Sondland very clearly said, and therefore their statements are direct evidence against the president. Judge convince you, Joe Malone? Well, the key <laughs> words were, if this was a, a, a court case, it isn't. It's a political process. And the Democrats painted themselves in the corner because they knew when they said we're going down the peach, impeachment track that they had to create such a compelling case that the American people would put pressure on the respective members of Congress to say, you better vote for impeachment or else. And that's what happened with Watergate. And that's why you had day after day, whether it was a governor or a congressman or a senator, saying he ought to resign, he ought to resign. And ultimately, that's what's happening. There is nothing close to that kind of pressure on members, elected officials. But it's not part, you know, I, there were so many incredible moments. That I, again, I don't think it advanced, moved the proverbial needle. But let me just pick one. I used to lobby him many, many years ago. James Sensen, Brenner, Republican from Wisconsin, former chair of the uh, of this uh, committee, he starts talking, as you'll hear in a minute. Well, first of all, let me tell you what he's talking about. He's talking about the fact that Devin Nunez, the ranking member, uh, member of the Intelligence Committee, John Solomon, a journalist, and Rudy Giuliani themselves, their names came up. 
when phone records of some people subpoenaed by the Intelligence Committee, uh, when their records were probed, here is the incredible reaction from Jim Sensenbrenner. Here it is. I come from the state where Joe McCarthy came from. Uh, I met Joe McCarthy twice when I was first getting into politics as a teenager. Folks, you have made Joe McCarthy look like a piker. Uh, with what you've done with the electronic uh, surveillance involved. So, thousands of people lost their jobs. Thousands of people had their lives ruined. Some took their own lives. He's talking about three people whose names were in the Intelligence Committee report because they were talking to people who were subpoenaed legitimately by the committee. Is this not an example of, if you don't have a case, you do crap like this? On both sides, absolutely. What That's the Democrats what do Democrats do is comparable to... They do it all the time. Pelosi the other day, every, Watergate pales in comparison. Those were her words. Watergate pales in comparison with this. That's baloney. Doesn't it? No, absolutely not. This was a phone conversation where, in a passing way, he says, you know, you ought to look into Biden and his son. What they did was horrible. It's a conversation. I guarantee guarantee you, every president, if you recorded every one of their, uh, their conversations with world leaders, you'd find something you could impeach him. You about. know, that line that Joe just uh, did was uh, echoed by Steve Castor, who is the uh, Republican counsel, right. basically saying this is all about eight lines in a phone call. Is it just about eight lines you in know, a phone like call? You know, like Pam Carlin, the constitutional scholar, I've actually yeah. read all this stuff. And, <laughs> and, and with respect, it is not about that. It's about a sustained campaign for a year and a half beginning with the dismissal of the ambassador, in which the president was, abu was Ivanovich, using, Ivanovich, yeah. right, the president was using uh, appropriated funds to pressure uh, an, an ally. There were national security implications, not just one call. You wouldn't have, I mean, Sondland talked about it, you know, the, the numbers of witnesses before the committee talked, it wasn't just one call, it was a sustained, sustained effort. But you know, the best indication of how horrifying this was, I can't figure out why no one has said this, is the reaction of the career civil servants when they overheard these conversations. When we're talking about what's the reasonable inference about this, about manipulating aid you know, for a personal purpose, the best reaction, the best indication is their reaction, which is, oh my God, what's going on here? How about that? Even despite the fact that the president attempted to suggest that some people like Colonel Vidman had dual loyalties uh, and that sort of thing, and that others might be treasonous, isn't the point that Judge Gertner's making an important point? So if Strzok and his lover, who is also they working it, to do with yes, this. they do. The point is, you have bureaucrats who have such a venom toward uh, to Trump that they want him out of there any way they can. Look at the attorney for the whistleblower. That guy was saying the day after the Trump got elected, we got to get him out of here. There is a movement in Washington, the swamp dwellers, who they will do anything. But Joe, let, let's, sight I was going to get to this later, but since you did it, something's sure. probably going to get buried today is this Department of Justice report that looked into the whole issue of whether there was a political taint on the investigators, the, the FBI, General's the report. people right. who started this whole investigation of potential tie between Trump and Russia. They concluded, even though there were some missteps along the way, to say the least, they concluded that there was no political taint. In fact, the Inspector General and the special, the, the, the uh, U.S. Attorney who was picked to do the investigation by the Department of Justice said there was an authorized purpose. And as soon as it came out, what does the Attorney General, who runs the Justice Department, say, despite the report, insufficient basis? So it doesn't matter what the facts are, people, and you because Included just now, respectfully, yeah, yeah. say the exact same thing because the attorney general, along with uh, with the U.S. attorney from Connecticut, who is able to subpoena witnesses, who was able to interview people outside of the bureaucracy, said it was there was an authorized purpose to the investigation. He is, saying, he is now conducting a criminal investigation. He, he said there was an authorized purpose to the investigation. No political pain and, and there on is the a crim and, and, but, but Horowitz, the inspector general, found one. Uh, guy who in the in the Department of Justice 
who in fact manipulated uh, an email. And he, there are now criminal charges going against him. So, but the big picture is that there was no problem with the initial investigation. So, can we get back? Can we get back? Just one more quickly, quickly sure. in response to that. There are quotes that are jumping out of that report right now. I was hearing them on the radio coming in, which, unlike the headline that uh, Horowitz gave, indicate that there were major problems. There were not in major terms problems. Of, there were major problems. He describes them. Tell. He describes them as, as 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 issues, which in fact says something about the bona fides of his report. That he says this was wrong, this was wrong, but overall. Uh, it's a different issue. Can we get back to that? Sure, if I may, ahead. I want to move ahead here for a second. One of the issues that comes after this is on the Sunday talk shows, uh, Jerry Nadler, who's chair of the Judiciary Committee, said there could be articles of impeachment by later this week. One of the big debates is how broad should these things be? There are pieces saying, whatever happened to emoluments and the emoluments right. clause? Whatever happened to the Mueller report? Others suggesting that this should be narrowly tailored to Ukraine because despite the debate here, Democrats think that's a much clearer and easier to comprehend picture. What do you think they're going to do and what should they do? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm really torn. On the one hand, it's not unusual for a U.S. attorney, for example, to overcharge, assuming that jurors compromise. I'll vote for this. I won't vote for that. And so one theory here is that you put in everything. You will enable then members of Congress to say impeach with respect to this, not with respect to that. And in fact, in both Nixon and Clinton, not all articles were approved. So that actually argues for a broader brush to give people an opportunity to parse it through. Or, I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly. Chuck Todd from Meet the Press said the exact same thing on a radio show the other day. I knew and it. Said essentially, <laughs> said essentially, give the Democrats who are in districts where Trump is strong something to vote against so that they can say, we didn't just buy this whole thing lock, right. stock, and barrel. So put a broader agenda, let them vote some of them down. You end up with obstruction of justice and a few other things. You're not in agreement. You well, think that's I'm a smart way to go. I'm saying they're doing that because they have such a weak case. And, and again, not from a criminal standpoint or a court sense, but in terms of public opinion. Trump's numbers have Forget not... Forget public opinion. If you were a member of the House of Representatives right now in your former life as a Republican, sure. based on the evidence you have heard, based on following Trump's edict, read the transcripts. Do you not think he's committed at least it, it, it offenses that could legitimately be considered, let me finish, yeah, as impeachable, even if you determined that he shouldn't be impeached for them? Let me put it this way. I think this You're not answering the pales, question. Yeah, yeah. This pales compared to what Obama did with the IRS, where essentially, essentially the Obama administration said, we're not going to approve 501c3s, charitable organizations. I'm not even going to get into that. Favor so let me try it one more time. Yeah. Did he come close to committing an impeachable offense, if not, in fact, committing one? Yes or no? My answer to that is no. The answer is no. no. And, and by the way, maybe if you're a liberal Democrat and you think he did, this is like impeaching somebody. It's the equivalent you were, of for a speeding ticket, putting somebody in jail for five you both, years. You serve the state as treasurer. You serve this country as a federal judge. Do you not worry about the tenor? of this kind of argument going forward. We have this report we mentioned a few minutes ago from the Department of Justice. The guy who runs the Justice Department says insufficient basis. The guy they pick says authorized purpose. Rudy Giuliani is back in Ukraine last week meeting with the guy who put forth the discredited notion about Ukrainian interference in 2016 to begin with. And the, the, the interplay between Republicans and Democrats today was so dysfunctional and so right. painful. Do you not worry about the future? I worry about that. I also worry about the Facebook bots that are come, that the Republicans are flooding people with with respect to this. But I think it's a very sim simple story. We have a police force. If the police force says, I'm sorry, I'm not going to guard your neighborhood unless you come out against my political opponent, then you're talking about manipulating the levers of power, manipulating national security issues, in this case, public safety issues, for a political purpose. You'd say that was a problem, wouldn't you? No. I, in other words, I would no. say that's a problem. Yeah, listen to me, though, for a second. because You have only a few okay, seconds. Okay. Nobody mentions in the middle of this thing. Leave the, Trump the, out of the story. Can it's I, a can, problem, isn't No, it? no. The Joe, the Joe Biden piece of it, it is yeah. a problem. When people say, and Biden included, and you saw him last week, there's no, been no media that said we've done anything wrong. Do you really want him as president to say to his son, go collect as much no, money I agree as you can? I don't like it at all, by the way. It was as dirty as What has that got to do with the impeachment because of the president the point of the United is, States? You are talking about a highly partisan, charged atmosphere but down in Washington. That doesn't excuse us. But to lower the bar for impeachment, 
to something like a, but a, this a is conversation the where one sentence is mentioned where there is never but any. You have 15 but seconds, but that's the difference it. between this is this is a national security issue. That's the difference between this and Watergate. It's funny. It because was a national security issue. Withholding this aid had national security implications, and that's trouble. Ten seconds, then we got to really go. <laughs> For all the years of Obama, he never approved that that uh, th th those missiles. Trump gets in there and, and the controls him for a week. The jab and suddenly it's good to see you, Joe. Nice to see you, Jimmy. Nancy Gertner. Thank thanks you. so much Take for care. your time. Appreciate it.